Like a bell cut. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Tom Anderson from the Tom Anderson Show with my son Grayson and also with me his wife Lila and her YouTube channel is Filipina USA and so we're going to be posting this video of uh, El Numero Uno son Grayson who's 14, just turned 14 a couple months ago heading into ninth grade. Grayson, you can explain what you're doing here. So I've got four different cubes here. Uh, I've got the 2x2 two two Rubik's Cube. Uh, the 3x3, three three, the one you guys know, probably. The 4x4 four four and the 5x5, five five, each in varying levels of difficulty, as you would expect the least and then uh, the hardest here. I've got a couple facts, and we're going to go through each of them, kind of explain a little bit of what I'm doing. So, we're going to start off with the 2x2 the two two Rubik's Cube, which has 3.6 million combinations. It's called the Pocket Cube. Um, it's a man manageable number, it says. Uh, if you fiddle with it um, approximately eight hours a day continuously, you'll solve it by pure chance roughly two or three times per year, per year. So that's, that's pretty, pretty uh, hard to do that. But if you know the way, it's pretty easy. So first thing we're doing is we're getting the bottom layer here. So I've got one piece here with the white on the bottom, and I'm going to match up and to bring another one down, and now we have two. And then another one with, uh, let's see. So you see we have the green on this side, the red, and then the orange. So we're gonna match up a piece with maybe the red. And now we have three, all in the correct spot. And then the final piece we bring down, and now we have the full side also with these sides here. So now we're gonna move on to the top layer, another pretty easy step, it involves one algorithm and an algorithm which is used on all of these, uh, mostly on here, some on here, some on here as well, um, is essentially a pre-meditated um, set of moves that you're going to use during a specific part um, of the solve. So for instance, uh, I need, so the first thing I'm going to do here when I'm getting is I'm matching up green with this green side and an orange with this orange side. So, and then I perform an algorithm here, and that moves them around a little bit, shifts some of them, moves some of them, and then I need to move them around in a certain way. Do another algorithm, do another algorithm, and now it's solved. So completely solved. Um, the next one here, the original 3x3 Rubik's Cube released in the 80s, has 43 quintillion combinations. So 43 followed by uh, 3399 nine, basically 18 zeros. That's a lot of zeros. So this one was the first one that I learned. The first thing you're going to do is match up these pieces here, the edge pieces to form a white cross as we call it. And I'll tell you once I've done that. So now we have the, don't matter, this piece doesn't matter, but the, the white cross. Um, and as you can see, these edges are matched up with the centers of each side. So essentially these centers never move. So that's how I know if it's, for instance, this is the blue side, because in the center there's a blue piece. Um, this is the white side. But where it gets a little bit difficult with cubes like this is there's no center piece. It's an, it's an even numbered cube. So you essentially have to make the center. Same with this one here because there's obviously no center. Um, but this one is a little bit easier for that reason. So now I'm matching up corners. So these corners here. So I've got two corners in already just by pure chance. And I'm going to get this one here. Now I have four corners. And then the final corner here. Now I have completely solved this side, including these rings here, this ring going completely around. Now I move on to the second layer. So we're matching up these edge pieces right here that go all the way around, and that will eventually solve it. So if I do that here, there's one edge piece in there. And then let's do another one. Oh! <laughs> two edge pieces in place 
And then let's get the final two. And now you can see we have a completely solved second layer. So now we move on to the final layer. This involves some algorithms. So one of the algorithms is getting this yellow cross here like we did on the bottom. So I'll do that. And now we have the yellow cross. And another algorithm is orienting these corners. And now we've done that, completely solved the top, but we have not solved these pieces here. So there's another algorithm for that. And now we've solved all of the corners. They're in the correct spots, but we still need to solve these specific pieces, the edge pieces, as we call them. So in order to do this, I need to face this to the back and do an algorithm. And now this is solved. And your record is under 40 seconds, so thereabouts? About 45 seconds. For the standard Rubik's Cube. Yeah. Now we're getting into the more complicated So ones. this one right here, this is the 4x4 four four Rubik's Cube, also known as the Master Cube or the Rubik's Revenge. Um, has 7.4 quator decillion combinations. That's 7 followed by a lot of zeros, probably more than 30. That's a lot. So, Getting into like Minecraft cubes. Yeah, a lot. So what we're doing here, like I said before, is we need to make these centerpieces. So let's start off with the white side. That's what I always start off with. So we have a piece here, a white piece here, and another white piece here. So what I'm going to do is drag this down and make what we call a bar in the center. So now let's do that again. There's another bar, and now we've completely made the white face. That's the white face. Now, if you look at a standard Rubik's Cube and you make the white face, what's across from it? The yellow face. So now I need to make the yellow face. So I can see that there's already a bar here. So in order to bring this up without breaking the rest, I pull it up like that. As you can see, now it's on the top. And then orient it like that and pull it back down. So now we have this still solved, but now we have this bar and another little piece there. So to get this piece matched with that piece, I'm going to bring it down like that. So now you can see it over there. Bring just like we did before, and now it's here. And then again, down, make a bar, and then bring that up. Now, you would it's a little counterintuitive. You would think to get this to be here, I'd simply do that. And that does solve the yellow face, but we've now broken up the white face. So in order to do it, it's a little counterintuitive, you put it here and you break up the yellow face, put it on the other, but then you bring it back. And now we have the yellow face and the white face completely solved, similar to this. So now we move on to the other side. So yellow, so this is a little bit of a memorization piece, but yellow, uh, whenever you see the yellow face towards you, if the red face is on the top, in which it is in this scenario, red's here and yellow's here. Green is always to the left, never blue. So you, that's kind of a memorization piece, which is a lot of, of this. Um, but you, you just have to memorize that because if you get that wrong, and for instance, if I, let's just say I do red here and I do blue here, it would be completely ruined and I couldn't physically move pieces down anymore because it, it wouldn't solve. So now it's time to get the blue face because that's what I see is most solve. I see a bar here and two pieces already together here. So let's see. We can move this over to here and making a bar, just more of the same things, basically. Make another bar. And now, oh, that's actually solved the red face. I didn't mean to do that, but it, it has. We've now got two green bars here, which I can match up, pull down like that. Now we have the yellow, the green, the white, and the red. And we finally just need the last two, orange and blue. So we have a bar here of orange, a bar here of blue, and on the same opposite side, this is kind of a lucky occasion, I've got blue and, and um, orange as well. So to do this, we're doing basically the same things, bringing it up like that and pulling it back down. And now we have completely solved all of these uh, center pieces. So now that we've done that, it's essentially like a unfinished edge three by three. So um, the method that I'm using here on all of these um, 
is pretty much the standard method. Um, so this one, I'm using just the standard method. Uh, on this, I use a method called layer by layer, which is getting the bottom layer, then the second layer, then the top layer. And on this one, I'm using the reduction. So it would be extremely hard to solve this layer by layer. Not extremely, but enough hard that it's it's not what we use in, in, the, in the field. Um, what we do is we solve centers, then edges, edge pairs, and that gets it to be essentially a three by three um, because you have these pieces as the edges and these pieces here as the centers. And then you just simply solve as if it was a three by three. So now I'm getting these edges here. So that this is a little bit more complicated because you don't want to mess up these center pieces. So what you do is you find pairs. So an orange and a white matches also with an orange and a white. So they're across from each other. You see here and here, these are the two pieces, which is actually very lucky. I can move it down, so now they're matched, but I don't want to mess up everything else. So I have to move it out of the way and move a new piece in so that that can be messed up, and then it's, and then it's solved. And um, that edge piece specifically. So you see now joined here and joined here. So that's an edge piece. Now, I'm just doing the same thing over and over. I'm not going to bore you with explanation if I'm just doing the same thing, but I'm essentially bringing more pieces down, matching them up, and now we have another, and then let's find the green and orange. I'm seeing two green, two oranges, and then green, green. We're gonna match those up. So now we do, right now I'm working on uh, orange, blue, and orange, blue. There, and then we need a blue, yellow. There. And now we've almost solved them all. And I'll get to what happens when we're on the final one. Final two layers, like that. And now we only have, I'm pretty sure, four more, just about. There. And then in between, I'm just doing little things to orient them correctly, because without that, I wouldn't be able to solve the cube. Okay, so here we are. So now we have, as you can see on all the other layers, every other layer is completely solved in terms of edges and then obviously the centers. So now we're left with a, a white and red piece here and across from it a red, or sorry, red and white and red and white on the, on the opposite side. Now, this is, it would seem a little tricky, but really it's another algorithm. So I'm moving this layer over and then I'm performing an, a flipping algorithm which essentially flips this here so that when I orient it back, it's in the correct spot. So now, if you look, all edges and centers are all completely solved. So now, just like a three by three, we're solving the white cross first. So I'm gonna get the white cross, just like this. There we go. Now we have the white cross similar to the three by three and it matches throughout the edges, just, just like before. And now we're just doing the same thing again. Again, I won't bore you with the details here. Oh, and here's a good example. I messed up, that was my fault. See, green, sorry, green is always across from blue, which should be here, but I messed up, I put orange there. It's actually a simple fix, but that means I have to do something else. There, okay, so now, we're just doing back again, back to solving the white cross because I messed up. Put that down there. I've kind of backtracked myself, but there, we've got the white cross again and then we just solve like I said before. There's one corner, move to another one. There, another corner, just corner by corner until we've got all the layers in. OK, 
Okay. And then the final one, orange and blue. Match it up. And now you can see we've completely solved, obviously, this and then the, the first two layers, really. It's three layers. Um, so now we move into, oh, here we go, a good section. So you see here, um, so typically on the 3x3, three three, there's a few different scenarios um, in which you need to do an algorithm. It's called fur erf because that's the notation that you need to do. So F moves are the front, R moves are the right, L left, B back. It's, it's basically just um, pretty simple to learn. And um, essentially, because I'm in this position here, it's kind of hard to explain, but because I have this oriented wrong, I need to do another algorithm. So it's a little bit of a tricky one. It's one I've messed up countless times. But not today. So now we've oriented this, and you can see now that it's a complete bar. This isn't out of alignment. So now we do another algorithm, just like we did on the 3x3. Three three. It's actually the same algorithm um, because we're solving like a 3x3. Three three. Almost finished the top layer. We might encounter some parity. Parity is what is known. Oh, here we go. We, we have. So, on a 3x3, three three, you'll never encounter a situation where just two edges, just these two, are misaligned, which we have in this case. Now, you would think that that simply means that this is out of alignment and needs to go here. It's actually not the case. What's happened is, it's a little bit hard to understand, but this piece has actually flipped itself and moved over. It's a little bit hard to understand, but to do that, it's another simple algorithm. And now that brings us to this state. Now we have three unsolved. There we go. And now this is completely solved. So now stack them in order. And then the other question is, how did you learn? You're not, you're smart. You're not a yep. savant where you figured it out yourself. You mm -hmm. did some mm -hmm. online investigation. Yeah, so this I had seen many people solve it. I'd been into them before. I, I had purchased them actually before, but I had never physically learn how to solve it. So I, I got online, quick tutorial. Within a week, I had memorized it all. This was fairly simple. It's basically the same algorithms, except a little bit on a lower level, because it's just corners instead of you know edges. There's no edges. This one was a little bit harder, um, but this is probably the easiest of the, if I were to have, it, obviously, of a six by six. But in terms of straight memorization, I could do this very easily, even more than this. This has four algorithms this only has two so it just shows you a little bit how bigger cubes can be a little bit easier in areas and then this one was basically a combination of this it just um, instead of having centers being two by two like this you have centers that are three by three so literally and I noticed this that one's cube. different the largest one looks like a different configuration yeah. composite of plastic is it a different brand uh, the, this this cube and this cube are actually the same brand um, but it, it it's called stickerless so okay. as you can see on here there are stickers on a black cube which turns independently like with, the classic exactly. cube since I was yeah. a kid got my first one but in the any of these there, there's also um, stickerless versions so yeah. it's just painted on the thing so for instance here it's tiling and these can be pulled off I can actually pull off a center here you can see that piece and then it simply clips back into there and that's how you tighten your cubes if so for instance I can pull this like that I don't want to pull it hard it'll break um, but you can tension it so that it's a little bit tougher but I don't prefer it that way and what about a spin I noticed that with your pinkies and with your index fingers you maybe use yeah. the original Rubik's Cube you're able to swiftly go through yeah. and that's for speed solving that, that, yeah that's correct that's that's called finger tricks so when I position my hands, I do it like this. So I have my in my pinky or ring finger here, which allows me to turn the center very easily. I have my top here, which allows me to turn there, and then my pinky down here, or sometimes I can use my pinky for 
middle turns as well if I'm using it for something else, but typically it's those. And do you grease your Rubik's Cube or is there a way to oil it or do they yeah. come oiled? Because I noticed how they, fast you were moving. When I was a kid, yeah. they didn't move that quick. No, yeah. They, they do come pre-greased slightly, but I um, there are special Rubik's Cube lubes. Um, also, you can just use silicon. Um, and I think WD-40 kind of works, but it's mostly meant for metals and it can actually dissolve the plastic. So I would not recommend it. So look it up online where to go yeah. and maybe go to Rubik's Cube online to figure out how to grease it to make it quicker. So now on this one, is yeah. this more complicated? It's interesting that you said the standard Rubik's Cube is more difficult than the larger one in front of the camera right now. Now yeah. the one in your hand, most of us would think more algorithms, larger, it, more complicated. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not necessarily as you move up. Basically, once you've reached a five by five, you can essentially solve every other cube. You just need to learn a little bit more um, flip swap, uh, uh, piece swapping. So for instance, f swapping this piece to go here and things like and that. And it takes longer because there's more uh, yeah. moves because it's Th larger. This just simply obviously. takes longer. It's, it's not necessarily harder but it takes longer. So let's let's start doing this. So uh, we're making essentially bars again. So on here we made two by two, or sorry, two piece bars. On here we're making three piece bars. And what, what's a little bit nicer about this cube is that there's centerpieces because that's an odd. So a centerpiece here, a centerpiece here, I, I know I don't have to memorize that red and goes there and et cetera, et cetera. So let's do that. Let's orient. So I'm bringing down, I have a piece there and a bar there. So now we line those up and now I have a bigger bar. And then let's make it up. Make another one here. And now we have a third bar, bring that in and then we completely solve the white side. It might take a little bit longer for you if you're doing this at home. <laughs> uh, but that's only because I've done this many times. So another bar here for yellow, just like the four by four, we're solving white, then yellow, then blue, et cetera, et cetera, or however, in which order works best. So smaller bar there, bring that piece down. Look, we've accidentally made a bar. That's always a good thing. Now, another bar here, we've matched up. And then we're going to bring the third bar in and align it. So bar here, bar here, bring it up and solved. So now we've completely solved this side or center and then this center as well. So now let's move on to the next. So first, what I see right now is that the red side can easily be matched with this center. So we bring that up. Now we already have a, a bar in place. If we bring another one here, let's do that. Now we have a double bar here. And then let's do it one final time there. Match it down. And now we have a completely solved red side, yellow side, and white side. And then basically the rest is the same stuff in terms of solving the center. So let's, let's do that now. Final one here. There we go. So now we move this orange bar into here. For the final time, orange, red. Now we can do this. This here, I'm actually going to move this down, this up. So just more of the same things essentially of what I've been doing. Making bars, bringing them down, bringing them up into place. Like this, blue, like that, orange. And then let's get here. Like that. And it always stems from the center, correct? Exactly. You would never yep. solve on a corner or a ring. You would start from the middle. Yep. That's correct. Uh, here. Like that. And we've got red. It takes a long time just to get each one of them 
completely aligned like that. And that one there. And what we're essentially trying to do is get it down to two uh, completely different edge alignments, or sorry, um, two sides completely solved. And then the final one here, and we'll have two. So now we, now we have the orange side unsolved and the blue side unsolved, and all the other ones are completely solved as you can see. That, of course, I show you an unsolved one. Um, but now we have to move on to a little bit of a more complicated one, which is swapping pieces. So like I stated before, so if I move pieces up here, bring them down like standard. Okay, so here we go. Here's a good example. So I need to get this centerpiece here, this, this orange one that I'm pointing out, down into this blue piece here. So what I need to do for that is a long, annoying algorithm, just like all the other times. There we go. So now you can see it's, it's in place, but we still have these two blue corners. So let's do that now. So move the corner down, up, like that. And now we just have one corner left, corner piece. So let's do that, that, move that over, and there we go. So now we have red, orange, green, yellow, white, completely solved. Another hard part, another hard part, we have edges on this, edges on this, obviously no edges on this, but now we're moving on to three-piece edges, so a little bit harder now. This is one of the longer pieces. It takes a little bit longer to do. So getting pieces in there. You can see now I've made a green and orange bar, two-piece, and I'm going to get another piece. Where is that? This is another part of it. You gotta look around the cube to find the piece that you need to get in there. By the way, as you solve this and you learned, what YouTube channels do you recommend? Yours yeah. is not one instructional. You're giving a basic overview. Yeah. If someone was following, no. they wouldn't be able to track no, it. No, because I'm not, not a, giving a lesson. No, I would recommend um, a the Wired. That's what I learned from. Uh, W-I-R-E-D on YouTube. It's a news channel or news-ish channel, but they have a great tutorial on it. A guy, I can't remember his name, but he does a great tutorial on it, and that's what I learned from. I believe he called it the Yao method or something similar to that, and he, and he went to a basically a Rubik's Cube professional. And you're at a 40-second level for the basic cube, but the, the best can solve it in a few seconds, right? A few seconds, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're that quick. To... I think the world record now is 3.5 seconds, which is pretty in insane. Um, so here, oh, here's a good example. So when you have a piece here that's, that's blue and a piece here that's blue, same, same um, piece that it needs to go into the same bar, uh, you need to do a, a small algorithm here to flip this so that the, the red is on this side. So I'm going to do that now, like that. And you see now the red is on this side. And I can simply orient again by moving down and then out of the way, like that. So now let's move to another one, this one, like that. It's kind of a, a long-winded portion because I've got to get each of them aligned and there's about four times, so basically eight, almost 12, 12 of them that I have to do, bars and pairs and annoyingly. But this is why it's good on road trips. You can just kind of sit there and do it over. There's also uh, shape-shifting cubes that shift shape, as you would expect. What does that mean, shape shifting? So essentially, I mean, I think a Star Trek. Imagine if you ha were to have a cube like a tr uh, like a triangle, right? But as you turn the side, so for instance, imagine if I were to be able to do this, turn the side like this, and then turn again that way. It's it's pretty hard to fathom, but yep. no. When I was a kid, they had a, they had a Rubik's cube, but it wasn't a cube; it was a triangle. Yeah, pure, That's called a pyraminx. There, yeah, or uh, uh, pyramid is what I meant. And then we have another bar. So let's get the blue, blue, yellow as well. 
what it's called. Blue yellow edge pair. Bring that over. And at that stage, with almost all the centers sold, how far are you from finishing it? Uh, I'd say probably another minute of the uh, So you're edges. like 85% done. Another minute of the edges, and then I got to get the down to the 3x3 three three stage, like we do in all the others. It's called reduction, because we're reducing it into the 3x3 three three stage, and then solving from there as if it were a 3x3. Three three. So that's why it's a little bit easier um, than odd layered or sorry even layered because you have to get the centers and you don't really know if that's the correct orientation so it's kind of a pain also i'll show you at the and end. that larger one and the smaller one in the camera view right now are the even based on sides yeah there's four sides there's two and the and the standard rubric lube is three yep so now i've got another pair just more pairs that's what it's all about Pairing them up, bringing them down like that. Okay, now we only have, I'm reading three left, maybe four actually. Sounds like a lot still, but basically once you solve one, you're solving others as you do it simultaneously. Because if you think about it, there's only a couple combinations that these three can be in. And slowly as you solve more and more, it becomes more and more likely that they come out in the solved state. So that's why it gets a little bit easier as you go towards the end, which is nice. There we go. Again, there's more pairs. Okay, I think we've reached this stage. Yep, so now we just have two unsolved edges similar to this. Now again, there's something you need to do. You need to bring this top layer right here over and then do another algorithm like that. And that pushes this over here, but now we still have this to go. So that's another algorithm here like this. That moves that. Let's move this over here and then do the same algorithm. Like that. And oh, here we go. Here's the parity. So on a regular Rubik's Cube, obviously there's not three centers like there is on this. So there's no way that the center piece in here could be misaligned because there's only one. Um, so there's an algorithm that you need to do, of course, just like all the others. It's a little bit easier than the other ones, actually. There we go. So now we've completely oriented all the edge pairs, centers, and now we finally get to solve it like a three by three, the easiest part. Okay, home stretch now. And three by three is the standard Rubik's cube that most yep. of us are familiar with. That's correct. And again, you're going much slower for demonstrative purposes and explaining yeah. it. I could probably, if I tried, hard enough solve all of these in 10 minutes but that's nothing compared to what the world record guys can do it's crazy okay they even invent new methods as they're doing it so they look at a cube and essentially in their mind plan out in the 10 seconds that they get for inspection what's the best way that I can do this what's the best method I can so use? like a chess player yeah and as, Planning moves out as, way as it evolves. Advance. So here we go. So now we've got this side and we need to do this. Here we go. And just finally, like the cube, the final move. And solved completely. So you can line them all up in color. And do a little scene here. They look a little pretty. Like that, and then this guy. Lots of fun. I bet your geometry teacher loves this. Ha! <laughs> and then finally, oh, there we go. 
checkerboard pattern on all of them. Goodbye. Awesome job, man.